People typically want to follow a leader who has a vision, a picture of what's in front of them. As a company, okay, Medtronic Diabetes, as a company, as an organization, as a, as a business unit, you have a vision, which is great for what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. Here's my question to each individual leader in here, though. What does your vision look like? What does your puzzle piece look like if you went to the people that you're leading and influencing right now and you ask them, tell me, what does our business look like 12 months from now? Tell me, not just in numbers, but what does it look like? What does it feel like? You know, do, do, do you know what success looks like? And what would their answer be? I will tell you, if you did nothing else based on my speech right now, gaining clarity in that will take you so far because you'll be amazed what they may tell you. You're like, where did they hear that? When did we talk about that? But when a leader doesn't have clarity or their team doesn't have clarity, there's no alignment. I don't care how talented your team is. In football, when I played football, I was a wide receiver. And no matter how talented our team was, we could be a team full of all pros. But if the quarterback comes in the, into the huddle and simply says, just get open, <laughs> there's going to be a problem. You're going to have a whole bunch of people running around going crazy, okay? So I believe that's what you're doing and you're taking care of that. But this is very important when it comes to fear of the unknown. We overcome the fear of uncertainty. We over, overcome the fear of the unknown with making the unknown known. What are the goals? Not only for your business, which is important, okay? And you're working on that. I want to make this a little more personal for you. You may know exactly what your objectives and goals are for the next 12 months, for the rest of this year, 2016, okay? For your business. My question to you, though, is what about the goals you have in the other areas of your life? Because goals are like the weights in a weight room. It's like the fuel in the furnace of achievement. I mean, you, it, so any area of life where you don't have goals, there's a good chance it will atrophy. You show me a marriage without goals, I'm telling you a marriage that's tinkering, even if the two people in the marriage don't want to talk about it. I show you any area of your life where there are no goals, it can atrophy. So as a leader, it's not enough to tell your people, hey, we have these goals we need to go after. You want to make sure as a leader, you're coming from an op authentic place. That means you're talking about things you actually live. There's proof. I promise you this works. Why? Because I live it. That's where your people want to follow. Now, keep this in mind. These are the kind of subtle things that make the biggest difference when you're already at the top of the rung, all right? When you're already at the top of the ladder and everybody's chasing you, because these are the kind of things those chasing you aren't doing. But these are the kind of things you can do, which makes a world of a difference. Does it make some sense? We gotta find ways not to increase competence, people. We gotta find ways to increase the confidence of all the people we lead. Because if the confidence isn't up, you're not gonna tap into all that talent that's actually there. This is another way of saying we gotta spend more time getting people to believe in themselves more than anything else. We have so many leaders trying to make sure, I gotta make sure my people respect me more. I say, you got it backwards. You gotta figure out how to get your people to respect themselves more then you're going to start tapping into a new level. Coaches, leaders in this room, we need to create an environment on the teams that we lead that eliminate the fear of failure from the equation. There's a natural fear of failure. Nobody wants to just fail. But we need to remove that fear of failure because we're going to get more of the potential that's actually in the people that we lead. Ideas that have been swimming around people's minds, but they're scared to say it out loud. Uh, chances. Conversations, all kinds of things. We're sitting on it. Everything you all need to go to the next level, you already have. It's already in your hand. I promise you, there's a wealth of potential on the teams that you lead. And the key is how do I tap into it? One of the ways you tap into it, you got to get fear of failure out of the way. What's a practical way of doing that for you as a leader? Will you please start sharing with your team your failures? The failures that you've overcome. See, the challenge sometimes is as we grow in leadership, guess what coaches do and leaders do too often? We get amnesia. We forget about our own mistakes. We forget about all the mess ups we had. And instead of using them as learning moments for our team members, we 
don't share them. So then they start playing not to make a mistake. When we need people making mistakes faster, we need to fail faster. We don't need to avoid failure. We need to be failing faster than we've ever failed before because that's the new reality we're living in. Is this making sense?